Welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to educate and debate specific stock investment ideas. Today, we are going to talk about Enbridge. Enbridge held their annual investor day back in December. So who cares? Well, I think 2020 is shaping up to be an interesting year for them. Deleveraging is complete and line three in service is expected in the second half of the year. I've put in service, or sorry, I've put expected in quotes because obviously they're still waiting on some approvals south of the border. And you have a Canadian blue chip that's currently yielding over 6%. So I thought it was interesting to take a look. This video, we're going to review highlights of the investor day, and then we're going to walk through a few key discussion points, namely valuation, deleveraging, distributable cash flow growth, and forecast or company guidance, and lastly, the increased dividend and payout ratio. If you're new to our channel and you like the content, please subscribe and share with a friend so we can continue to grow the community. Let's jump into it. So first we'll start with the business and I won't spend very long here because I did do a video on Enbridge back in 2018. Uh, other than what I will do is just highlight the three major components for Enbridge. It's their liquids pipeline business, their gas transmission business, and then their gas distribution and storage. So you can see over here on the right, um, Enbridge transports 25% of North America's crude oil. They 20% uh, of natural gas consumed in the U.S. goes through Enbridge and 3.7 million customer connections in Ontario. You can see that in the orangey yellow area here. So Enbridge is a very large energy infrastructure player in North America. Now if we fast forward and look at the stock performance, you can see the last five years have have sort of been a, a bumpy, flattish ride for investors. Uh, they were up at a high of $65 and we're using the Canadian share price here. So $65 back in early 2015 uh, and then have bumped along, bumped around over the years. They acquired Spectra or announced the agreement to acquire or merge with Spectra back in September 2016. <clears throat> took on, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> took on a lot of debt. Um, market was worried about uh, the amount of debt they had as well as some concerns around their structure. Uh, they had a pretty complex uh, corporate structure with lots of subsidiaries and in early 2018 the stock dipped below $40. Uh, Enbridge announced plans to number one simplify the structure as well as some asset sales to reduce debt and then if you fast forward to this year um, in about May or middle of the year they had some issues with their line five and then the Line 3 expansion uh, delays, it was supposed to uh, be put in service by the end of 2019, and that's obviously been pushed back to 2020. So as I mentioned earlier, Enbridge has a 6.3% dividend yield, and based on their 2019 guidance of $4.50 for 2019 distributable cash flow, that works out to an 8.7% DCF yield. So what we'll do next, we'll just jump into their <clears throat> investor day presentation and we'll walk through a few of the highlights. You can start here by seeing on the agenda, this was a four and a half hour event that they held in New York. Uh, you can play a round of golf in that time. Uh, so I'm going to do my best to try and summarize some of the key points in the next 10 to 15 minutes. So for highlights, we'll go to slide seven. Here we go. Perfect. Um, so the first thing they do is reiterate their 2019 DCF per share but guidance. They expect to exceed the midpoint. So the midpoint would be 445. I'm using 450 for the purposes of this presentation. <clears throat> Debt to EBITDA is now down to 4.6 times, so well within the targeted range of 4.5 to 5 times. They also announced 2020 target distributable cash flow per share. The guidance range there is 450 to 480, so some growth over 2019. They increased the dividend by 10% to $3.24, and then they gave some guidance for post-2020 growth uh, of 5 to 7% in terms of distributable cash flow and maintaining a leverage range in the 4.5 to 5 times. Next thing we're going to talk about is repositioning the business. You can see here. On this slide. 
So Enbridge has had lots of growth over the last 10 years. You can see um, they completed the Spectra acquisition and they've taken EBITDA from 3 billion back in 2010 to over 13 billion in 2019. The problem is that growth has been funded with equity and debt. So when you actually look at the share price between 2016, so the share price at the end of 2016 and the share price today, the share price is actually down 7%. So it was $55 at the end of 2016 and it's just a little over $51 today. So despite the growth, uh, shareholders haven't really benefited from that growth, at least not yet. Uh, valuation quickly, uh, currently 177 billion of enterprise value compared with 13 billion of EBITDA. That's about 13 and a half times EV to EBITDA. That compares with, uh, in 2016, valuation of 14.5 times. Um, so business has moved forward, it's grown. Uh, they made the Spectra acquisition. Valuation is actually slightly cheaper today than it was back then. Next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, on slide nine. And just quickly highlight here, their 2020 forecasted EBITDA is $13.7 billion. So uh, $13 billion in 2019, and they expect that to grow to $13.7 in 2019. Okay, slide 11, we're going to talk a little bit about deleveraging. Here we go. So progress on key priorities, and I think this is a good job of showing uh, how debt has come down over the years. <clears throat> so Enbridge had six times debt to EBITDA back in 2016, and that's now down to 4.6 times today. And I think, you know, when I think about this as an investor, important thing uh, to keep in mind is that debt is cheap. And so reducing debt, which is what Enbridge has done over the last few years, and they've done that by means of some asset sales, but they've also just grown their EBITDA. So they've grown into uh, reduced leverage. But debt's cheap. And by reducing debt, it makes the balance sheet stronger but it also dampens equity returns. So it provides a headwind uh, to equity investors. So I think now that they're at the target level, we know that at least we're not gonna have that headwind as an equity investor. So I thought that's important to note. Next thing I wanna talk about is uh, DCF per share growth. Um, and you can see here, I'm gonna assume $4.50 for 2019. And if you compare that to 2018, that's less than 2% growth. So growth year over year is, has been quite low. Um, and then if you look, what I think is interesting here is they, they don't show 2016 on the chart below. So they, they show 368 and growing. We, uh, I think that's them trying to be a little bit sneaky, but we are not falling for it. Uh, we're going to jump back into the 2018 investor day here and I'm um, way deep in the presentation but you can just see over here on the right hand side that in 2015 um, they did probably about 375 in 2016 they did four dollars of distributable cash flow per share uh, so if, if you look at the growth over the last several years and you included 2016 at about $4 here, it's really bounced around. It has not been steady growth as the chart would suggest. And I think the market's reaction to their investor day, I think one of the things that they're probably disappointed with is the, is the lower growth moving forward. So again, 2% growth year over year was probably largely anticipated because again, line three um, didn't hit the initial schedule. Uh, but the 2020 growth forecast um, is probably, so here at the midpoint, 465, that's actually down from $5, which is the forecast that they had, had that they'd showed um, in their 2018 investor day. So I, I just want to see if we can see that here on page 49. Yeah, here you go. So in 2018 investor day, they had showed 2020 guidance. 
of $4.85 to $5.15. So $5 a share. And obviously that's come off quite a bit. So, you know, obviously line three has been delayed. Management has one hell of a job in this industry trying to get pipelines approved. But I think their guidance over the last few, year, few years has not been very reliable or too consistent. And I think this lower growth moving forward um, might have been something that the market wasn't too thrilled with. Next thing I want to talk about is global demand for oil and gas in that it is still growing in a base case through to 2040 based on uh, expected world population growth, increased urbanization, and a rising global middle class. The base case is that uh, gas in the blue here, oil in the orangey yellow, uh, will both continue to grow in terms of demand. So again, that might change in the future, but right now, both of these commodities are expected to show increased demand over the next 20 plus years. Next thing we're going to talk about is growth outlook and capital allocation on slide 14. So you can see here, we talked about this previously, uh, beyond 2020, they're expecting to grow the distributable cash flow per share at five to 7% per year. And important for investors, obviously this is proxy for free cash flow. And it's also what Enbridge uses to calculate um, the dividend per share uh, and future dividend increases based on uh, projected payout. So if we go down to the next slide, they talk about disciplined capital allocation and pivoting back away from a business that was growing through acquisition. Enbridge is really retrenched here, focusing more on organic growth opportunities, self-funding those, keeping leverage in its four and a half to five times target range, and also um, targeting a long-term dividend payout of 65% of DCF. Now, I thought what was interesting here is the current dividend that they just uh, announced that 10% increase, current dividend is $3.24. Uh, that actually represents a 72% payout ratio uh, based on $4.50 distributable cash. So uh, remember, they had promised investors the 10% dividend increase this year. So even though they didn't deliver the distributable cash growth that would really justify that big of an increase, they went ahead and, and did it anyways. And I think the, the takeaway for investors is even though they couldn't really afford it, they did it anyway. Um, it might affect future dividend increases. So when we come around to next year's uh, dividend increase, I wouldn't expect it to be nearly as large. And two more points here on slide 15. Talk about their priorities. Obviously very focused on keeping their leverage uh, low, or we're not gonna call four and a half to five times low, but in line, maintain their investment grade credit rating. Secondly, returning capital to shareholders. So they talk about dividends here, maybe buybacks at some point. And then thirdly, organically grow the business. And they talk about some of their growth opportunities here, which I won't spend too much time on. And then I thought this was good on slide 16. They had some key questions that they included in their presentation. So will you ever consider increasing the risk profile to achieve your growth outlook? No. Would you stretch the balance sheet to achieve your growth target? No. Uh, current three-year plan anticipates being within the range. So they're trying to um, comfort investors uh, at how they're going to approach growth going forward. Would you further shift your asset mix? We have a good balance between crude oil and natural gas. Would you consider large scale M&A? Not at this time. Are you considering buying back some of your shares? We are growing shareholder returns through the dividend, but may consider buybacks post line three. So I thought that's an interesting comment in here. Assuming line three goes through in the second half of 2020, uh, we might see something there next year. And are you considering in increasing your international presence? No plans beyond the select European offshore wind investments that they have today. So those are some of the highlights uh, from Enbridge's Investor Day. If we go back to our presentation here, what's the conclusion? I think, number one, Enbridge has completed a multi-year deleveraging process. It's now down at its target range of four and a half to five times debt to EBITDA. In fact, it's at the low end of that range. And I think that reduces the headwind to equity returns going forward. 
Number two, distributable cash flow forecast, growth forecast of 5 to 7%. That's below what they presented at the 2018 Investor Day, um, in Investor Day guidance. So probably a little bit disappointing to the market on that side, even though some of it may have already been baked in. Dividend increased 10% to $3.24. Again, we talked about that payout ratio is 72%, which is above the target range of 65. Expect next year's increase to be smaller. Valuation more attractive than in 2016. So you've got a company probably showing lower growth profile, but we've also got lower interest rates, potentially higher asset values, and company has lower leverage. So a lot of factors have changed in 2016, but the valuation today is more attractive than it was back then. And all that to say, 2020 sets up to be an interesting year for Enbridge investors. So let me know what you think. Um, put it down in the comment section. Uh, other than that, stocks you think I should look at, drop those in the comment section as well, and I'll add them to the list. We'll be back soon with more content, but until then, happy investing, and don't bury your head in the sand.